one thing that I know XRP holders are probably tired of hearing about is all the big bank partnerships. Because guess what? None of them have resulted in price action. But in this video, I'm going to show you guys 100% proof on why this hasn't happened. Why hasn't the price action really kind of, I would say, mirrored all of these big announcements, all of these big partnerships, and how big they actually are? Why isn't the price action there? Well, in this video, you're going to know the answer. So with that being said, welcome to the channel, everyone. My name is Nick. For those that are new to the channel, hopefully by the end of this video, you do become a subscriber. If we take a quick look at Ripple's focus, it is still very well on banks. In fact, recently, Wrath of Kahneman did put out a post regarding Ripple.com website recently updated. With Medico, they've added BBVA and DZ Bank to the customer Chiron. Still no explicit rationale provided for who's on. Solutions reflect three clear prongs. Payments, custody, and stablecoin. Interesting, banks are back on the menu. And yes, banks have always been on the menu. The problem is, is that a lot of people just kind of started to ignore banks. They didn't really care about the big banks. And it's kind of comical that now, as we do really kind of start to see this entire landscape shift away from, you know, retail, and now we're starting to see institutionalization of the space, you know, all of those Bitcoin maxis and all those people that used to say, oh, XRP is a banker's coin, XRP is the banker coin, why would I touch XRP? They're all now saying, hey, we welcome BlackRock with open arms. We want institutions to buy our Bitcoin. We want institutions to be in this space. But if we go back in time, guess who, guess who was the original you know, uh, promoter of bankers to come into the space? It was Ripple. And guess what they were looking at? It was XRP. So now that we're starting to see the landscape shifting, would it be a bad argument to say that Ripple and XRP are at the forefront of institutionalization of digital assets and XRP will benefit greatly from that? I don't believe it is. I don't think that it is too big of a stretch to say that. But it's just so funny how things have changed. But like I've said on multiple occasions, let's think about all of these connections. More so, let's talk about Medico actually, because this is more so focused on Medico. So let's address this. Number one, powered by Medico Harmonize. This was Credit Suisse announced back in December of 2023. Very big announcement from Medico, aka Ripple. Also, Roll Match, a number one big player around security services. Uh, they are fully focused on crypto trading venues, uh, enabling banks, security services firms, all of them to trade cryptocurrencies at speeds unrivaled in the market today. Again, leveraging tech from Medico and NASDAQ, or if you will, Ripple and NASDAQ. Over here, BBVA, big player, announced back in December of 2023. All of these partnerships, by the way, focused on, you know, new stages of uh, crypto asset tokenization, private banking, um, you know, just full on embracing institutionalized uh, institutionalization of crypto as a whole. That That's the full focus here. Now, also, boom, back in December, again, Zodiac Custody. This was a, a, another big announcement. The leading digital asset custodian backed by Standard Chartered, Northern Trust, and SBI. Another great expansion. Again, what are they focused on? Well, beyond just custody they're focused on trading institutional digital as asset flows also tokenization and then hsbc another big one tokenized securities huh very interesting outside of that we also have congratulations to dz bank we're going live with its institutional digital asset custody offering powered by Medico Harmonize. By the way, have you been following the dates? November, December, all of these big announcements around December and November of 2023. Two months 
well over six plus announcements. Then also over here back in April of 2023, Medico has secured its fifth partnership with a major financial institution in the last nine months. This time with Leishan Steiner Private Bank, VP Bank. Another big player. Then of course, February as well, 105 year old German bank, Deca Bank, to launch a tokenization platform in collaboration with Medico. Again, this is why I focus on, you know, what Medico was and is and uh, how big this is for Ripple because this is bringing in so many institutions with it and it's very substantial. Very, very substantial. Now, again, this is just one piece of the puzzle. We're not even talking about, you know, the hundreds of institutions that have been leveraging Ripple for so long that are also tied into this to this image and this puzzle if you will but also over here good morning crypto post this breaking ripple documentation shows ids for dozens of chinese and hong kong based banks prior to this update ids were only available in the philippines now we can look at the full breakdown these are all the bank ids these are all the major banks out there in hong kong very significant we also have over here china as well and there's more to this, right? Very large players. Now, what does this mean? Well, if we actually go to the documentation on this, this is just, you know, banks IDs. It's nothing too crazy. It's not showing us partnerships or anything like that, but it could eventually lead to, you know, Ripple announcing that, hey, guess what? These are all of our clients. And it wouldn't surprise me at all if I'm being completely honest with you guys, because as we really look at Ripple and what Ripple has been pushing for so long and the solutions around Ripple, it's agnostic to the fact that they're not trying to kill these banks. They're trying to work with them. So it would be in their best interest, like even JP Morgan's on this list, right? And for the longest time, everyone would say, all right, well, why would JP Morgan care about Ripple? Like, why, why would they work with Ripple? Well, it would actually benefit them greatly. Why? Well, because with ISO 20022, for example, all of these smaller banks also have to innovate. And if they start utilizing something like what Ripple Payments does have to offer, all of a sudden, now they are in competition with the big banks, regardless of the size, regardless of how many clients they have. All of a su sudden, you know, small banks could start eating these big banks' lunch. So it would be in their best interest to also leverage Ripple Payments. And we've talked about this on multiple occasions. But this just goes to show you the potential that could be. Also remember the 1,700 contracts in AKA NDAs. And this is from, law, the, this is from the lawsuit documents, by the way. 1,700 contracts. These are specific agreements with Ripple around, you know, XRP to contractual counterparties and things like that, aka 1700 NDAs. We don't know what number of that is partnerships. We don't know what number of that is, you know, users or so. But that's very significant. But again, all of this, where's the value in it? When is it going to result in XRP's value? Well, we're going to get to that here in a second. I also want to show you guys all of the other partnerships. Like for an example, these 18 partnerships that XRP Drops posted for us, Europe, Israel, South America, Asia, Africa, India, UAE, Australia, like this just goes to show you how fast Ripple has been expanding. Now, of course, we also have this over here as well. All of the uh, partnership development from ISO 2022, let's do it. Here we have a full breakdown of uh, all of these major players. Also over here, it continues to expand. And this is uh, also another sort of image with all of the images of those partnerships as well. Again, the network at which Ripple has created is very substantial, very substantial. And building on top of this, we also have from Anderson, back in November of 2017, Ripple hosted a meeting for two dozen central banks in New York. The first presentation at the summit was by the IMF. Ripple has been working together with the IMF for many years. Interestingly, they discussed CBDCs all the way back then, years before Ripple announced their CBDC platform. 
Who do you call to set up a meeting for two dozen central banks along with the IMF to kick it off? And here we actually have a full breakdown of this. So Ripple hosts world central banks to explore next generation of payments. Over here we have recently uh, Ripple gathered over two dozen central banks from around the world to explore how new technologies enable the next generation of payments. Also over here, this is with, of course, the IMF, the Internet of Value, enabling connectivity and interoperability. Then also on the last slide, we have Ripple shared how the adoption of XRP to connect fiat currencies creates a new paradigm for liquidity. Very interesting. Now also, if we scroll down, here's the part about CBDCs. These domestic trials explored rebuilding existing systems, building new backup systems, and creating new features such as central bank digital currency. By the way, Ripple removed the article from Ripple Insight, but it's still on Wayback Machine. Very, very interesting. Let's just think about how crazy this actually is. Again, it also shows you how significant Ripple actually is. Now, where's all the value in all of this? Well, recently, Smoke Dog put out two posts, and this one is an exclusive Ripple Russia presentation that's been completely under the radar until now. In 2018, a confidential presentation was delivered on the state of cryptocurrencies and cross-border services. This took place at the Research Institute of World Economy and International Relations in Moscow, Russia. The presentation highlighted that after the financial collapse of 2008, a critical request was made a request for a new approach to interbank cross-border transfers. And the first proposal for this innovative solution, Ripple. The significance of Ripple being mentioned in this context is profound. It reveals that even in the early stages of the cryptocurrency revolution, Ripple was recognized at high levels for its potential to transform the broken global financial system. Ripple is the solution. And here we have the uh, full breakdown of this. We could see the era of crypto um, econ economics, sorry, new challenges and reg tech in the sphere. And here we have Research Institute of World Economy and International Relations named after. And then here we have the uh, full breakdown of it. And then we have at the bottom after the financial and economic crisis of 2008, a request for a new uh, approach to interbank cross-border transfers began to be formed, Ripple FinTech System. And then uh, they also do mention a few other ones, but Ripple was the first one mentioned. Now, building upon this, in the same presentation, major confirmation was given that all the major banks partnered with Ripple, including systemically important institutions like Santander, Bank of America, and Standard, uh, Standard Chartered, and operating in test mode. That's the big thing to focus on here. If these major banks are still in the testing phase, it means they have not yet fully integrated Ripple's technology into their live day-to-day -day operations. This explains the lack of significant price movement for XRP despite its potential utility. Now, this is something that I've always told you guys. Yes, there is use going on, but it's not use in the way that everyone has been you know, touting it for so long. Live use case is not really there at scale at all. We are not there yet. We have the real price impact for XRP will come once these tests conclude and the banks move to full scale adoption. The fact that systemically important banks are involved in testing is a positive sign for the future of XRP. The successful conclusion of these tests will create a demand for XRP as a utility asset in financial transactions, significantly driving up its price. The market may currently be in a wait and see mode with investors holding off on driving up XRP's price until they see clear signs a full adoption and regulatory clarity. Once these tests transition to live operations, it may very well, well uh, trigger a revaluation of XRP's value. As David Schwartz said, they must be willing to flip the switch. And here we have that document over here, works in test mode with more than 100 banks. We have the breakdown of all those banks, unlimited scalability. It is designed to improve existing payment technologies by accelerating exchange operations and facilitating the trade of low liquid assets. Then also over here, we have from David Schwartz back in 2017. The main limiting factor right now is everyone having enough confidence that the system is going to work correctly, that they're willing to flip the switch and let it make large irreversible payments without it, uh, intervention. And again, you know, what this is giving us is confirmation that although, yeah, all of these announcements, all of these big partnerships, everything that we are seeing, they're very significant. They're very big. But we're not at that stage where they are fully live and in full scale yet. Once that happens, 
everything that we have been seeing, everything that we've been hearing, that's when it all pays off. And I'm in 100% belief on that. Regulations is the last obstacle for these big institutional players. It's the number one thing holding them back. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, and notifications on because of more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. And with that being said, guys, it's been Nick. Thanks for watching. Peace out.